Well, one of my eBay purchases arrived. It was $12, and I think it may help me at least experiment with my solar panels. Huh. That's weird. I've never bought a step-up or step-down converter that came with a screwdriver. But yeah, this is what it is. It's a step-down converter. I'm thinking it goes from... 5 to 30 volts down to like 1 to 29 volts or so. I could be very wrong with the numbers, but either way, it's a very dynamic range. <laughs> square. Not square. There we go. It was only $12 and it's said to handle 10 amps and it even has like a little readout and several LEDs and stuff like that, so it looks pretty good quality. Well, I'm going to see if this has any effect, like MPPT, on my solar panels. Because it would be nice if I could have seven, 17 volts going into this at 5 amps, then have 13 volts come out at like 6 or 7 amps. That way I get more power from my solar panels. But I think the fact that the solar panels' amps don't increase as the voltages drop down, it may just make this drop down to the same voltage as the battery and just pass current through it. And so that wouldn't be very good. So we have it all connected up. Here's the outlets for the battery. I think the battery is currently at 12.7 volts. Let's turn on power supply. Maybe I do need these. Oh my. Look at that. Now that is so cool. I should have bought more of these. And it maxes out at 12.5. Cool. I'm going to set it at 9.06 right there. And I'll bring up the voltage. Take it to 18 volts. And I'm going to limit it down to like 2 amps or so. So that'll kind of replicate how the solar panels work. Now let's connect this up to the battery. And let's see how this works as we pull it up. Pulling more power from the power supply now. Oh. You see, with this, I won't have to have a charge controller. I can just have it putting out at exactly 14 volts. It'll never overcharge if it just stops at 14 volts. And it's pulling power from that. Now, that's pretty cool. I think we need to hook up my multimeter to see how many amps is going through into the battery. So it does seem to be stepping up a little bit, but I don't know. It might just be acting as a resistor. Hmm. Let's add some more voltage disparity, whatever the term would be. 27 volts. Okay, so it definitely is stepping up the current as it's stepping down the voltage. Well, that's good. So this is quite promising, but I would have to say, I'm not thinking this battery is taking enough current, or it's, it's not a big enough load to drop this thing down. Because what I want to do is I want to take as much power as I can from this, as if it's a big battery pack, 
and see if that drops the voltage down a lot. Looks like this might be working how I wanted it to, though. Let's take it outside and connect it up to the bigger batteries and see how it does. Ah, well, here's an ever-increasing problem. Shade. It's creeping up on my solar panel area. So I'm thinking if I did build a tower here, it might not get sunlight all the time. Don't know. Interesting, though. So we have nice sun. Now, whenever we have this much sun, normally these panels only give out 5 amps. So whenever I connect up this, if this thing displays more than 5 amps, it should be a success. Hmm. Now we have this multimeter connected to the panel, so it sees the panel voltage. Almost two, uh, 22 volts. Then we have this meter on here saying what the voltage of this is. Then we have this saying what the amperage of this is. 21.8. Let's connect this up. 0.3 amps. Wow, voltage isn't going down very far at all. Hmm. This is very interesting. It looks like it's only taking a small amount of power to get the battery up to 4.2 volts or so. So let's add another battery in series. Or in parallel. Sorry. Okay, so we have the batteries connected up. This should pull more power now. Let's test it out. Solar panel's at 21.6 volts. Hmm. It does bring it down. That's a shame. It's odd how it fluctuates in voltage so much. If it's getting three amps from there, I'm just curious to see how many pa how many amps is pulling from the solar panel. Okay, so I have it changed up. This is still the voltage of the of the solar panel, 21.5 volts. This is, this is now down to 14.0 volts, and this is now measuring the voltage of the battery bank. 12.52 volts. Let's connect it up directly. Hmm. It's odd how it goes down, but then I think it goes back up afterwards. It may actually be less efficient. I don't know. At the very least, though, it is working as a voltage regulator, so that's very interesting. Hmm. It's been about two hours. And it's been charging nicely, it seems. Looks like it went down to 13.9 volts just as it started to warm up. My main power supply does that all the time. Its voltage changes a little bit as it heats up. I'm not thinking this is very useful because it seems to be allowing less power through than if I just connect it up directly. But it does regulate the voltage, so, hmm. I'm thinking it might be better to just hook a bunch of batteries in parallel and maybe have a very dead one because a dead battery like that one will not let the voltage go up too high because it'll just turn all the energy into heat. So that could act as a resistor type thing that would keep the voltage from going too high. So I'm thinking it might be better just to have the two panels connected up to a big battery bank and just have them simmering all the time. I'm going to disconnect this and just connect the solar panel up directly to see if that gives more power. It should. Let's connect it up. It's been about a half hour and 
that's definitely some results. 13.46. Evidently, this does help. It's very interesting. Quite happy with this. It might be very useful. It'd be nice if it had more settings, but I just noticed that it had a button on here. When you press the button, it changes which voltage it's reading. So, press it, and you're reading the, the input, and press it again, you're reading the output. This is pretty nice for $12. Well, anyway, I think that's pretty cool. Let's connect that back up and see how it does. Now running through that, it does put more power into it. Pretty cool. Just got to make sure it stays t tuned, right? I'm thinking what's happening is at 19.2 volts, the panel can put out like 4 amps or so. And stepping that down, you actually get like 6 amps going into the battery. Well, if you try to pull 5 amps, well then it just pulls the voltage down to the same voltage as the battery, and so you're just putting 5 amps then. If I was charging a 6 volt battery, it would go from like 22 volts down to 19, down to 6 volts. But it seems like the sweet spot is like 19 volts or so. Because that's just before it's pulling 5 amps, so it keeps it above 18 volts. But 5 amps at, or 3.5, 4 amps at 19 volts, stepped down to 12 volts, is more than 5 amps. Just a bit more, though. Not a whole lot. Now, of course, this wire is very resistive. And these little connectors out here are getting quite warm. So it's wasting energy. That's why there is a disparity between the two voltages. I think this step-down module will be great for tinkering around, but I'm thinking I need something a lot better, or at least something I can, I can control a lot more, in order to actually get more power from this panel. I'm thinking, what if I make a power transformer that has an automated, like, AC generator in it, so it can run from 17 volts to 12 volts? It would be a homemade power transformer. It would probably have, like, 200 turns in the primary winding, like 150 turns in the secondary winding, so it'd step down the voltage a little bit, but step up the amperage, hopefully. We can see how that went. And then, I, that might even actually act as a, de a battery desulfator, because it would be sending pulsed DC current into the battery. Hmm, interesting. Very interesting indeed. I could run it off a, a, a Texas Instruments 74HC14 uh, chip, which is a simple CMOS chip that takes hardly any power at all. That would be the oscillator that would keep the thing moving, probably like 60 hertz, because I'd probably find a power transformer that, uh, that's made to run on 60 hertz and just re re rewind it, but I think it would still probably work best at 60 hertz. Since I first got this solar panel, I've, I've had this battery on the panel about, let's say, six or seven days, and the voltage is at 12.24 volts. It's pretty good. Now that's 12.24 volts after it's been sitting for about 45 minutes because I let the voltage settle. I may add some Epsom salt to that. The main downside to this battery is as soon as I start charging it, it starts getting all slimy and sweaty and corroding. And all the acid or whatever starts to leak through the top. I don't know. It's such a weird chemical reaction. I'll, I'll let that battery sit and charge for a little bit. It was, it was sitting at about 12.9 volts, so it's pretty much fully charged. I'm quite happy with this. So in conclusion, I'm actually quite happy I spent the $12 in the step down converter. I think I'll go a different route for maximizing the power I can get from my solar panels, but this has giving me some interesting results. Now, I'm thinking the reason why this is more efficient than connecting the solar panel up directly, and the, re and the reason why it jumps from 19 volts to 14 volts on the input is because of the amperage draw of the solar panel. The pencil line is the amps, while the purple pin line is the volts. And ignore that little line right there, that was a, that was a mistake. Anyway, so whenever we connect the, the solar panel up to a battery, a 12 volt battery, directly, it puts out 5 amps and about 13 volts. Well, 12 to 13 volts, let's say 60 watts. We're going to have to do a 6 volt battery, 
puts out 5 amps at about 6 volts. It's about 25 to 30 watts. Well, wh what this hat does is it lets it lets you take all the power from like the 18 volts and convert it down to the 12 volts with more amps. Unfortunately, unless these have amperage going up, like with the battery, because with the battery, if you, if, you pull, if you pull the voltage down further, the amperage goes up. But with the solar panel, after a while, the amperage just stays the same. So if you pull the current down with, with, this, with a controller like this, that's not really regulated or anything like that, it will get down to here, giving it like 85 watts at 19 volts. And then if you pull it anymore, it will shoot down to the voltage that it's outputting. So it's just like connecting up directly. And so it jumps back and forth between those two. Now an MPPT controller is wired up so that it can take exactly like 18.5 volts or whatever and give you about 92 watts. But this one just rides a little bit above that curve where, it's, where, where it, the amperage just drops off. I guess, at least that's my theory. Well, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. See ya!